follow them afterwards. Thank you so much, Jim. Thanks. Thank and you very much. The conversation can continue on Slack and where we can continue answering tough questions. Okay. Bye. Thank you very much. Thanks. Bye. Bye bye. Our next speaker is Juan Quintanar. He is the main developer of Quartal, uh, an OSLC API generation framework. Um, and he works at Connexus. He's, a, he's one of my colleagues. Uh, we can see you, Juan. And can yep, you uh, can stop? Yes, and we can hear you. You can oh, stop. Singer. Well, well, good morning, afternoon, whenever you are. Well, as you know, my name is Juan Quintanar. I'm going to present you the topic called Quattle Generated OSLC APIs. But well, first, let's just start with this tiny introduction. Well, well we, during the lives, we cannot see your slides. Are you oh, sharing the wrong oh, monitor? Oh, oh, yeah, I wasn't wrong monitor. Sorry. No problem. Yeah, can you see it? Now we can see it. And if you could yeah. do it in full screen mode, that would be oh, good. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, let's start with this introduction then. Well, we, we as we know, during the lifecycle management of products, software, or application, well, the organization used different applications to fulfill different purposes. For example, we could use GitLab to connect well to create to start the source code we have developed for a specific project or any other application. And we could use the tools, for example, provided by IBM. ELM, uh, well, in this case, we could use the Durst Next Generation tool to, well, to say which requirements these GitLab files needs to accomplish in order to be considered as valid. But how we, how can we communicate this? Well, for example, a new modified file in the GitLab side to the DNG side, or what if we need to communicate a modified file, a deleted file, or even a new commit to this development tip, or vice versa. What if we need to communicate the new requirement or maybe a, a modified requirement to this other department? Well, as we know, the good data interoperability is pretty important because, well, as a result, we could guarantee a good communication between these development departments and, or any other department. As a result, well, we could create better results, we can have a better feedback, and we could make better decisions. So, well, we could use the OBSLC the, which this is the standard, well, this is the tool which can provide us standards to share resources from different party applications. Here, well, as we know, there are different ways to exploit these third party applications or any other application like Jira, CodeBeamer, or any other application as data source. Well, here's when Coatl, a Python based framework, gets into the core. But in short terms, what is Coatl? Coatl is just a software factory developed by Connexis that can generate an OSLC layer on top of any REST API of this software application. In this case, we are taking advantage of the REST architecture using them as a data source. Or, well, by taking the previous example, we can connect now this OSLC API integration for GitLab with the tools provided by IBM ELM. For example, in this case, we could connect the GitLab OSLC API with DNG. We can specify that now this uh, specific GitLab file, it's linked to a DNG requirement or even more. We could use other tools provided by the OSLC enable application. In this case, well, we could use the RKM tools of ELM to link, for example, a test case to a specific GitLab file. Um, well, we this well, maybe we could take the previous example and showing a live demo of this integration. Here, well, we have the we have a tiny file containing a specific GitLab repository, which we want to link to a, <clears throat> I mean, uh, which we want to link to a DNG requirement. Here, well, by using the OSLC API integration, it is possible to link this file, and we could expose a brief summary of this GitLab file using the preview UI dialogs provided by the OSLC API. Um, well, even more, maybe we could watch this video showing the full example of this application. Here, as you can see it, well, the OSLC API provides us capabilities to integrate this application with the other OSLC enabled applications, for example, TNG, so that we could associate a TNG project with a GitLab repository. Here, yeah. Or, uh, well, once we associate this, Repository, we could see that there are, well, 
we could select this GitLab repository. We could specify if we want to get the information from a specific commit or uh, even a branch. And we could, well, select this information. We could select the resource type of this application. And finally, we can create this, the link between this GitLab file with the DNG requirement. And well, as I mentioned before, is it possible to see the preview UI interface that can provide us the information of this GitLab file? But well, what you might be wondering, what about the other OSLC APIs? Well, the OSLC APIs generated by Coatl can connect them with each other, or well, by can, can connect them with other OSLC enabled application. For example, in this case, we could use the integration we have developed for G GitLab to connect them with an OSLC integration we have developed, we have also developed for CodeBeamer. Here, well, we could link these files provided by GitLab to a hardware requirement in CodeBeamer, or maybe we could include, well, some links between the issue template in CodeBeamer to a GitLab file. But what about the li these generated links? Well, our solution is completely database agnostic. That means that you can use any <clears throat> graph database to store these links. And well, we just need to adapt it according to the client necessities. If you want to link them in Neo4g, Virtuoso, or any other graph database, we can do this. And well, you might be wondering, which, which features does these OSLC APIs offers? Well, these OSLC APIs provide, well, the specific REST resources according to the OSLC specifications, such as the OSLC core 2.0, the OSLC configuration management, and the OSLC tracked resource set. You might be wondering how long this solution take. Well, instead of spending months creating a single solution for a specific application, the OSLC APIs generated by Coatl will create, uh, well, multiple, uh, multiple OSLC integrations for multiple applications in just a few weeks. Why? Because we need to know about the REST API behavior. For example, the REST API structure, we need to know which endpoints are used to expose a specific resources. The JSON response, well, how is, how is this structure in the API side? Also, we could we need to know about which authorization options this REST API uses. In this case, we have compatibility for both basic and OAuth to the o authentication. And also, we need to know about which headers requests are necessary to get this information. Apart from it, well, it's necessary to know which HTTP methods are necessary for fetching the REST resources. So that, well, we could create the OSLC integration for a specific, well, for a specific API. Well, I talk you I talk you about the OSLC configuration management. Well, yeah, we have a, we have this feature integrated in any OSLC API we generated with Coatl. We could take the previous example using GitLab. For example, we could link this well a GitLab commit or a GitLab branch to to the GC to the GC tool provided by IBM. Here, well, we have the preview UI dialog that provides us information about this GitLab commit in this case. But well, we could see this video exposing the full integration of, with GitLab. Here, well, we are in the GC tool. We have created an association with the GitLab OSLC API in which we can specify, well, which <clears throat> repository are we, we are going to use in this case. Now we could select either the commit or the branch we want to link with these applications. And well, finally, is it possible to see it, the complete feature provided by the OSLC stream in GitLab using the preview UI dialogs provided by the OSLC API integration? All right. Well, but what about the OSLC tracked resource set? Well, the OSLC APIs generated by Coatl can provide us a log about the REST application via the tracked resource set. The, the thing we are doing in this case is just gathering the specific information of the REST resources we're exposing in the OSLC side. We're monitoring which changes these resources have undergone. And well, we could provide a log of these, <clears throat> of these resources using the OSLC tracked resource set to other OSLC enabled application 
you know, to use them for for reporting purposes or any other tools like that. For example, we could see this in an integration using the Code Beamer OSLC API with the Lifecycle Core Engine tool provided by IBM ELM. Here, well, I have another video exposing this feature. Here, well, is it possible to see that we have just two projects in this trial version of Code Beamer? We can select, we can grab the resources from these projects and expose them in the OSLC API integration. Uh, well, in the case of the Lifecycle Query Engine tool, is it possible to link this this OSLC integration with the with the LQE tool? As you can see it here, well, we have integrated this tool. Also, if we navigate and we want to specify which users can get this information, well, we could provide the access context of of the TRS projects to well to this LQE tool. Uh, well, we could verify the that this that the code beamer information is stored in this. Oh, well, yeah. Well, we could we could perform queries to verify that this information is already integrated in LQE. Here, well, I'm just taking the information about the code beamer bug we are storing here. Um, yeah, but you might be wondering, have you just created integration for GitLab, code beamer, and Jira? Uh, well, the answer is no. The Quattle generated OSLC APIs have, have been created for multiple applications. Apart from these, the three tools I mentioned, well, we have created integration for GitHub, Bitbucket, TestRail, ServiceNow, and even other tools apart from them. For example, well, I can show you a tiny demo using the GitHub OSLC integration. Here, well, we could link a specific GitHub folder with a DNG requirement. As you can see it here, well, this is the result. And well, I can show you even the video I made for this application. Here, well, first of all, is it, as I mentioned before, is it necessary to integrate this GitHub OSLC integration with the DNG application? OSLC API provides those features to do this. And well, we could associate the Git any repository provided by this GitHub OSLC integration with the DNG project, as you can see it here. So that, well, we could use this specific project. We can specify if we want to get information from the baselines, from the commits or branches, I mean. And we could select this, the file provided by this, well, by these sections. And as a result, well, we could see that this resource has been, have been linked to this DNG requirement. All right. So, yeah. But what about Jira? Well, in the case of Jira, is it is possible to enable this integration and use it by using the OSS layer created by Coatl. Here, where we're just linking a specific GitLab, Jira task, I mean, with the DNG requirement. Uh, well, as I mentioned before, we need to integrate this Jira OSLC API with DNG. We can associate them with a specific DNG project. We could associate a specific Jira project with DNG. And as a result, we could get the information provided by this project. Here, well, is it possible to see the, all the available resources provided by GitLab? We could link, uh, for example, Jira task, a bug, an improvement, new feature, or any other resource with this DNG requirement. Okay, well, we could select one or many of these requirements. We can expose them in the, in the DNG site, and we could expose a brief summary of this compo of this Jira task using the preview UI dialogues. But yeah, okay. Yeah, but what about service now? Well, in the case of service now, I, I decided to, to change this tiny example. In this case, well, is it possible to link a specific app provided by service now to a global configuration in the GC tool? How? Well, as I mentioned before, is it possible to use the preview UI dialogues provided by our OSLC API? If you see it in this site, well, is it possible to see that we have already created 
other integration using GitHub, Jira, and other applications. Uh, well, in this case, well, it is possible to navigate to the ServiceNow project, and we could see a brief summary of the of this project in this case. All right. Uh, well, but about serve test rail in this case. Well, we can use the information provided by test rail and integrate it with a DNG requirement in this case or any other OSLC enabled application. Here, well, we are just extracting the information contained into a <clears throat> test rail test case and we can expose them into the, well, we can link them and expose them in the, the in a DNG requirement. Here, well, I have a tiny example doing this thing. Well, this case, well, we select this requirement. We could create a new link. We just need to specify which project in this case we are going to use to get these test cases. Here, is it possible to get uh, the information about all the test cases contained in a specific project? So that, well, we could link them with this DNG requirement. And as a result, is it possible to see the same it's linking using, well, the preview UI dialogues here. And furthermore, well, we could navigate to the test rail site and to see that our link has been created correctly with test rail in this case. Okay. Uh, well, you might be wondering, well, and then, then we can create links only in the in the DNG application or any other OSLC in the application? Well, the answer is no. We can create link between the third party applications. How? We have developed an extra tool which allows us to manage links in with the third party application from the main third party application. Well, it's just a web, web browser extension our development team has developed. In this case, well, we could use them using the previous example I created for GitLab plus the web browser extension we made, and we could create these links. Well, we could manage, in this case, we could create, delete, and even edit the links generated with the IBM DN ELM tools or any other OSLC enabled applications such as, well, our integration with ServiceNow, Jira, and CodeBeamer. Here, well, this is a tiny example using the web browser extension in GitLab. By using our web browser extension, well, we attach a button in the middle of some specific of some specific files we want to link with other OSLC application. For example, if we want to link a GitLab commit with a DNG requirement, well, we could attach this button using the web browser extension. Once we click on it, well, we will deploy an iframe which exposes our link manager tool in which we can specify which link type are we going to use to create this link between, well, this GitLab commit to the engine requirement, and we can select which dark project are we going to use in this case. But, well, even I can show you a tiny demo using our current integration. Here, where we are currently accessing to the GitLab, our GitLab repository, where we're accessing the commits. And yeah, as you can see it, here's the button we included using the web browser extension. And it deploys the <coughs> link manager tool. Here, well, we could select which link are we going to use, the project we're going to use to get the selection UI dialog to create these links. And well, at the end, we could link this information well, we could link this GitLab commit to a specific DNG requirement. But well, what about other tools? For example, TestRail. In the case of TestRail, our web browser extension, well, can be adapted to use any other application. For example, if we want to create to link a DNG requirement to a test case, well, the web browser extension allows us to create a new field called DNG reference in GitLab, in the TestRail side, I mean, to open this, to open our the, to open the UI dialog provided by DNG so that, well, we could generate this new link between this, between test rail and this other application. And uh, well, once we save this information, is it possible to see this new reference? Um, yeah, well, okay. Well, 
As a brief summary, well, the OSS API generated with Coatl can help us in integrating any REST API to other OSLC enabled applications. And well, instead of spending months developing this solution to make, well, an OSLC enabled application for a specific tool, well, we could create multiple multiple OSLC applications using Coatl in just a couple of weeks. And well, the OSLC API generated for these REST APIs can, well, provide this the information to the OSLC applications according to the OSLC specifications. Uh, well, we could create not only links in the OSLC enabled application, we can create them in the main third party applications via our web browser extension. And well, we have a couple of next steps. In this case, we would like to collaborate on achieving the digital thread by creating new OSLC APIs for multiple or different REST APIs that the community provides us. We want to add some extra support for any other global configuration management tool. And we would like to add in some extra support for accepting multiple web browsers such as Google Chrome or, or Microsoft Edge. And well, I think that's it from my side. And I just want to say that it's a pleasure to see you in this new OSLC Fest. You feel free, free to contact us. We will try to give you some extra information or any other demo you desire. Thanks, Juan. Um, so there's a question uh, in the Q&A coming from the Q&A module. Uh, is there any effort to use the open API specification to expedite the generation of the OSLC implementation? Uh, could you repeat that, please? Oh. Yes, yes, sure. Oh. Oh, well, actually, the Quattle, the Quattle implementation uses Swagger to, well, to generate these OSLC APIs. We are just creating a tiny adapter which can help us to read this information and, well, we could use them to generate this OSLC layer on top of REST. So Quattle uses the open API document and then yeah. Swagger to generate from that the, the code. Okay. Um, Another question, uh, what is your business model for OSLC interface generation? Do you distribute Coatl or sell generated interfaces? Well, we are currently planning to sell the generated interfaces. Uh, well, maybe we could we could be open to any other extra suggestions about this topic about this about topics of distributions or okay. Yeah. Um Another comment is open API doesn't support specifying RDF schemas or shapes. Um, and then the next sentence says, so not very helpful for OSLC or linked lifecycle data. Can you comment on that? Well, we already know that we are not, well, open API cannot support RDF schemas or shape. In this case, in order to include this section, well, we're just creating some custom vendor extension, which can help us to enable this integration once we create the OSLC API, the OSLC layer in this case. So, okay, since I know a bit about the project, you confirm, uh, Juan, if, if I'm what I'm saying is correct. In the open API document, you are defining the mapping from the native REST API schema to the OSLC um, resources schema and 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 so that the target schema on the OSLC side does need to support REF. So you have a mapping from, I guess, standard schema to the REF schema. Is is that correct? Yeah, that's correct. And it's defined in Open API. Yeah. Okay. Um, let me quickly see if no other questions in in Slack. No other questions in the Q&A module. So I think we can finish on time. Uh, thank you very much, Juan. Uh, thanks for showing all these video demos. Um, this was the end of day two. We will have day three coming up tomorrow. Day three will be de dedicated to uh, mostly researchers uh, presenting their efforts with OSLC. And um, I really hope you'll tune in again tomorrow. Thank you very much, everybody. Have a good day.